Hello Stampers, Kelly Atchison at stampabove.com coming to you from Menasha, Wisconsin. Thank you for joining me for the Totally Techniques blog hop where we are featuring heat emboss resist today. Oh my goodness, this is one of my favorite techniques and it's one of the easiest techniques that provides the biggest wow factor, I think. I chose to use the Wheel Walrus Be Friends because, well, it's stinking adorable, of course, and my pigment sprinkles. You guys have seen me use these over the last couple weeks. I am having a blast with them, and I think you're going to love what I came up with. So as I was looking at some of my samples here that I made over the last couple weeks, I was thinking, hmm... That kind of looks like sea. Like I could do sea creatures in here in some of these. So that's what I decided to do and use the Wheel Walrus Be Friends because they're sea creatures. Not under the water creatures, but above water that provide us with a lot of entertainment, right? <laughs> okay, let's get started and I'll show you what I did. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in a couple pieces of watercolor paper. Now this is measuring three and three quarters by five and this one is two and a half by five and a quarter. I actually started um, just by cutting out some different layers of watercolor paper and then we're going to do a little bit of heat embossing. I'm going to bring in my Versamark ink pad. And this is just one of our piercing mats that I cover with printer weight paper. It's a good surface to stamp on. And we're going to do a little embossing first. So you're not really going to be able to see too much once I get this on here because it's white, clear embossing powder on a white background. But as soon as I start adding the pigment inks, you will see everything just fine. So we're going to take... I think we're gonna do this little guy and this little guy and some fish on this first layer. So I'm just gonna randomly stamp my little walrus guy. And I wanna make sure it's real random. I don't want it to be a definite pattern here. I think I'll do one more right there. And now, it's very hard to see where I have stamped. Like you guys probably can't see anything. But what I'm gonna do is I'm going to heat set that right now and then I'll be able to see it so I can continue stamping more images on this background. And again, I'm just using clear embossing powder. I'm gonna bring in my heat tool here and I'll be right back. This is kind of boring. Well, it's fun for me to watch, but not so much for you. Now, once I have this done, I hope that you can see, maybe if I get the light on them just right, you might be able to see my images. Just trust that I can now see them. And I can stamp some more images around. So I'm gonna grab this little walrus guy, and I'm going to add him. randomly and then I've got these cute little fish and I can kind of see if I tip it in the light just right where I have room to stamp this right there and maybe a few more fish here Let's hit this with some powder now because it's getting very difficult for me to see. And you should really use your embossing buddy before you stamp and put your powder on because that'll help keep your embossing powder only where you stamp. Okay, so that looks pretty darn good. I can see now where I might put a couple more little fish. I want my fish that are going to the right. Put one right there, one right there, and maybe one right here. And I think I can do another one right there. I just kind of want this background to be filled up. That's going to give us the most bang when we do our technique. 
Oops. I like to keep my embossing powder in this little container because it just makes it easier. It catches what's left over. I can put a lid on it. The spoon fits right in there. Oh my gosh, that looks so cute. We're gonna close that up. I'll hit this with the heat gun again, and I'll be right back. Okay, this looks perfect. As long as we're doing this, we're gonna do our other layer too. And I'm not gonna forget to rub that with my embossing buddy. Now I find that in places where you have static cling in the winter, that's where you really need to use this more so than other times. But I try to use it all the time. Now I'm gonna bring in the little walrus that's like in the waves. And I'm just going to randomly stamp that little guy all over this layer. And we'll see what we've got here, because I can't really see. Watercolor paper is very porous, so it's a little harder for you to see that wet ink on there until you get the powder on. Now, there are several different things that we can do with this once we um, get our embossing done, and we'll talk about that in just a second. Okay, and now we are ready to work with this. So we've got two pieces here. Like I said, there's several different things you can do with the heat emboss resist. So first of all, the biggest thing is you're gonna heat emboss. Secondly, you can take a brayer and you can go over with ink and you will get this technique. You can take an aqua painter and mix it with some ink and go over it and you're gonna get a resist. So. Where we've stamped is not going to pick up the color. That's going to stay white. Um, let's see, what else can we do? We can sponge. You can use a sponge or a sponge dauber, and you can rub color on and get an emboss resist technique. But like I said, what I wanted to do here today was I wanted to use my pigment sprinkles because they are amazing. So I've got another great little tip here for you. I decided to use a box because when I used my pigment sprinkles before, what I found is when I was spritzing them with water, it was blowing some powder around on my desk. And later when I would bring my cup in, if it was sweating, it would suddenly have a color under it because there was a very fine coating of dust on my table. So what I recommend is you take a box like this and you can see that we've I've used this quite a bit. I had classes last week where everybody got to try this. I put some typing weight paper in the bottom of it, just a whole stack, so that when this one gets all messy, we can pull it out and use the next one. So that's what I've got going on here. I'm gonna bring in the smaller, the two and a half by five and a quarter inch piece, and I'm going to dust that with the granny apple green pigment sprinkles and then I'm going to also come in with the Bermuda Bay and it's funny that this looks orange and it's gonna turn green that just like kind of blows my mind it's like magic it's like magic stamping today <laughs> okay I have a spritzer here, but I noticed there's only a little bit of water in it. So hang tight. I'm going to go fill this with water because I'm going to need a lot of water for this technique. Okay, we are loaded and ready to go here. Watch the magic happen. Should I zoom this? Let me zoom this just a little bit. Now you want to use quite a bit of water because you want those colors to burst. And look at how fantastic that is. I know it looks kind of like a mess right now, but I will show you the finished product in a moment. Now, a couple other little tips. You can take a tissue and you can sop up some of this water that's pooling on the edges, or you can just let it dry. You're gonna get different effects any way that you do this, it's always gonna be a little bit different. All right, we're gonna set this one aside and we're gonna do the next one. So this is our larger piece 
And I'm going to do the same color combination on here, but I'm gonna use a little bit more Bermuda and a little less of the Granny Apple Green. Maybe I should do the purple one here for you too. Let's add a little bit of Gorgeous Grape because I've got some samples made up where I can show you that I didn't use Gorgeous Grape. Okay, here we go. Are you ready for the magic to happen? Oh my gosh, look how vibrant that is. And this may look kind of like a mess to you, but to me, it is beautiful art. And again, if this curls up and you get pooling at the sides, you can tap the edges with a, with a um, tissue or a paper towel. This one's going to be absolutely gorgeous. I can't wait to use this. Now, I'm going to set this aside and bring in the ones that I have that are dried. So I've got this little cutie. And didn't that just turn out adorable? Now this is just the Granny Apple Green and the Bermuda Bay. And you can see my little fish in there and all my walruses. Now the one that I just used, well this is the same color combination, but I used a little bit more of the Granny Apple Green. Okay, and then this is the one that I added the gorgeous grape to. And isn't that just phenomenal? Yeah, so, I'm going to make up cards using this so I can show you finished cards. This one I'm probably going to finish up on my Facebook Live on Sunday night. So make sure you join me. Go do a search on Facebook under a stamp above dash your creative coach. You're going to find my Facebook page if you're not familiar with it. Click on like and then click on following on there. Sunday night, 7 p.m. Central Time. I do a Facebook Live and I will be doing something with this card. So I'll like, or this layer, I'll make this into a card Sunday night. Okay, let's finish these cards up because they're going to be stinking adorable. Now the first card I'm going to use is this two and a half by five and a quarter inch layer. And so I'm bringing in a Granny Apple green card base. This is five and a half by four and a quarter. No, I'm sorry. It is, yeah, five and a half by eight and a half, not four and a quarter. Okay, there we go. I've got a layer for the inside that's four by five and a quarter. I've got a little scrap of granny apple green and a scrap of black and a scrap of white. We're going to do just a tiny bit of stamping first. I have Bermuda Bay ink. And I'm going to use the greeting that says, I will, I will walrus be your friend. Because why? Because it's stinking, adorable, cute. <laughs> then <clears throat> I'm going to use my stitched shape square. And I'm going to put that up at the top and die cut it just like that. I'm also going to bring in this scrap here and use my layering squares, the scallop that's just a little bit bigger than that one, and die cut that, and I'll be right back. Okay, here we go. Then I'm gonna take that cute little walrus that's laying on his back, and I'm gonna just stamp part of him right on my square. I'm bringing in my Stampin' Blend Markers. I'm using the light crumb cake for his little cheeks. The dark smoky slate to do just a little bit of shading here. Because you know, with these you can look like an artist, even when you're not. And now I'm coming in with the light smoky slate to do a little bit of blending on those shadow lines. You wanna make sure you keep his little tusks white and his little eyeballs because that'll really make them pop. Do a little bit of blending here so it doesn't just look like I put a mark around the edge. Okay, look how cute that is, yay! I'm gonna zoom back out now because I forget to do that. There we go. <laughs> I don't want to go off camera and have you guys not see me. Okay, a little bit of assembly here. 
just that little pop of that green on the outside. Now, isn't that just adorable? <laughs> Your fingers are gonna get dirty with this technique too, so. Once I'm done, go wash the dishes or go take a shower and wash your hair and this will all come off. Have a little bit of experience with that. All right, I've got dimensionals here. I should say I'm out on this card, but I've got lots of edges. Make sure you're not throwing those away because they work just as well. So I'm gonna pop this up on dimensionals and get this ready. Lay that aside. Don't let me forget where that is, because I do that a lot. Okay, next. This little layer I'm going to use in the High Seas 3D embossing folder, and that's the one that looks like waves. So I'll be right back. Don't forget, with these new folders that are in the annual catalog, you need this 3D embossing plate or six sheets of cardstock as a shim to make these new 3D embossing folders work. Okay, another little tip. I love this line that Stampin' Up! has put on here because I could put my layer in here and line it up with that line and know that my waves are going to be straight, if that makes sense. And here we go. Isn't that pretty? Now you could use either side of this. It's completely up to you. And I think we're ready for assembly. Where is, here's my layer. Where's my other white layer? Is this the one that I need? Yep, this is the one I need. Okay, I'm going to mat this. Usually I mat with a black layer, but because we're using a dark color on here, a more vibrant color, I am going to mat this with a white layer instead. So this white layer, again, is two and three quarters by five and a quarter. This is gonna look really neat on our Bermuda Bay waves. Just like that. Oops, I've got a little bit of glue coming out there. We don't want that. Where's my tissues? Here's one. I've always got tissues laying around someplace. I'm kind of a messy stamper if you haven't noticed that. <laughs> you should have seen me last night, you guys. I was covered in paint. Like, my hands were covered in paint. We are doing wedding preparations. We're making decorations. And I was frost spraying, uh, I don't know, 25 quart jars. And I had frost spray all over and then I painted a palette white so we got a wooden palette and I painted it white and boy that's a chore in itself because I had to paint the front and the back and the underneath and the whole thing it was just covered in paint but I got her done and Haley is headed over today for those of you that are new my daughter Haley is getting married August 3rd and um, she's headed over today to give me some more stuff to do while she runs and does a little bit of shopping for other things okay I've got this all layered up now. Where did my ribbon go? Here it is. And I thought it would be really kind of cute to put a little tag of ribbon coming off the edge of my square. So let's see what that looks like. Cause I'm, yeah, I think that'll be really cute. What do you guys, I'll let you see it in just a second here. Get a little piece of tape on there. Yep, that'll work. Oh my gosh, yes. Oh, look how cute it is. Oops, it's a little crooked. I think my greeting is a little crooked, but isn't that just adorable? Yeah. Then we've got an inside layer also. And I thought maybe we would just take, oops, I need to clean my stamp. Make sure you're cleaning in between colors. Oh, by the way, Here's a close-up of that resist, and you can see every place that I stamped, the color resists. Now, if you're using ink on a sponge, you may want to take a tissue and polish off that emb the embossed images, um, and they'll brighten up and be super white. All right, I'm going to do a little walrus right here, and I wanted to use a different one just because I thought that would be super cute, right? And I'm going to color him in the same way that I did the other one. And 
we're going to do some. Right where Stampin' Up! has put all these lines, these are like shadow lines, and that's where I kind of like to do my shading. I'll add a little bit more, but you always want to do those lines because that's where there would normally be shading. Those artists at Stampin' Up! they know what they're doing. And I'm going to come in with the lighter smoky slate. Be careful around those walrus tusks. Of course they're walrus tusks. What other kind of tusks would you have on a walrus, right? <laughs> I'm just going to blend those lines in a little bit more. Oh my gosh, he is so delightful. And I think, what is this? I think I'll grab the light balmy blue and just throw a little ground or water or whatever under him. Isn't that precious? Yeah. That's gonna be the inside of our card. Whoops, let's get that closed before I wreck something, right? Here's the inside. There's a little singing for you. <laughs> Isn't he sweet? You want to see the other one? Because it's pretty cute too. Okay. We have two pieces of Whisper White. One of them is three and three quarters by five. The No, I'm sorry. One of them is three and seven eighths by five and an eighth. The other one is for the inside, four and five and a quarter. You guys know you can always find all of these dimensions on my blog. And as a matter of fact, if you're watching this on YouTube, right under my YouTube video is a See More. When you click on that, it's going to give you a direct link right to these projects on my blog so you don't have to search for them on your own. Then I've got a basic black 5.5 by 8.5. This is going to be our card base. And... Let's see. Oh, and then we need that scrap of white. Where did that go? Here it is. We need that scrap of white again. I am going to take the, I will walrus be your friend. And I'm gonna stamp that right there. And then we're going to die cut that with one of the stitched shape circles. If you don't have these stitched shapes, I highly recommend them. I use them all the time. Like they are one of the best things I've ever invested in. And I really do use them constantly. If you don't have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I would love to earn your business. You can pop me an email at kelly at stampabove.com and I would be happy to send you a catalog too. So don't miss out on that. And then I'm gonna do a little black fish right down there. Whoops. Oh, isn't he cute? Just adorable, right? Let me get this closed up before we, again, have an accident. And I'm going to color my fish in just with the Bermuda Bay stamp and blend. I love to color with these. They're just nice. They don't leave any scribble marks like markers do which I do not like at all. There's our cute little fish. And let's put our card together because this thing is adorable. All right, we've got that black scrap. I'm going to use the pretty label punch, which looks like a cloud. And actually, you can do some masking with this and you can lay it down and then sponge blue ink at the top and then move it over a little bit. Maybe that'll be my tip video for Wednesday to make clouds on your background. Oh my gosh, so pretty. Okay. So we've got this, Let's see if I can pick it up, and this, and I am going to, um, dimensionals, where did you guys, oh, here they are. I'm gonna take some dimensionals and put them on the back of my circle. And we are going to, Put them right over this cloud. Cloud. <laughs> it's the pretty label punch, but I like to call it a cloud because it really does look like a cloud. Okay, then we're going to take our green layer that we made earlier. And again, I'll show you the detail on there in just a second. We're going to use that white mat again. 
and that white layer is five and an eighth by three and seven eighths. This watercolor paper layer is three and three quarters by five. I like that it gives you a little bit bigger border on your card when you do it that way versus a standard card front size. I think it makes your images pop a little better. Oh, geez, this is folded really crooked. Oh, it is what it is. There we go. Make sure that sticks good. And I'm gonna add this little guy. Oh my gosh, so cute! This is gonna be our little greeting on the front. Make sure I get that straight. And then let's pull some let's pull some rhinestones in here because why wouldn't you? I'm gonna put a rhinestone right there and a rhinestone right there. Oh my gosh, you guys, isn't that super super cute? And then if you want to get a little bit more crazy, we can take a little wink of Stella and we can color our little fish in. Now obviously I know this is probably gonna be hard for you to see but I can see that little bugger shimmer. <laughs> Super cute. Okay, what are we gonna do on the inside? I think on the inside, we are going to stamp this little walrus that's in the water. Well, let's put him right over here. And we'll color him in. So today I'm going to be working on pictures. Haley has these frames and I will take lots of pictures for you guys and share them. So don't worry. All this stuff I'm telling you about, you'll get to see. Even though you can't be there, you'll get to see it. But um, if you follow me on my blog and Facebook, Facebook is just easier for me to post on. So I'll be sharing lots of stuff on there. But So Haley has these frames and in each frame is... Um, I think it says at the top, us at age one, us at age two. And she's going to have a picture of her, a little picture of her, and a little picture of her fiance, Jared, uh, in each picture frame. And that's going to be the table number. So table number one is going to have them at age one. Table number two is going to have them at age two. Table number three at age three. How stinking adorable and creative can a kid possibly be? I guess I shouldn't be that surprised, right? <laughs> Um, she did grow up, my daughter. She was kind of a little mini me for a long time. So, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I thought that was just super, super creative. This is dark Bermuda Bay. And then here comes that balmy blue. Is that what I was using? Yes, light balmy blue. And I'm just going to come down here and color in a little bit of the water. Just like that. Don't overthink that when you color things like that because they're not, they don't, they're not supposed to be perfect. Okay, so yeah, that's what's going to go on each table with some votive candles, floating candles, a quart-sized jar that I frosted with frost paint with a bouquet of flowers in it. It's going to be spectacular. And today, I'm going to work on the donut wall that I'm building, and you'll see pictures of that too. All right, you guys, I wanted to show you the detail in this card. Like, aren't those walruses just adorable and those little fish all over in there? Yeah, super, super cute. These are both just so adorable. I love them. Let me see if I can get them both. Yeah, they're both in there. And then the inside. Who wouldn't smile when they got this? Oh my gosh. And here's the ones that I made for you. This one's still drying a little bit. Now you can take a heat tool and hit this. I would be kind of careful with that because... Um, of the embossing. We don't want to burn the embossing powder off. At this point, I don't know if it would matter because we've already done our technique and it's already got white lines where the images are. And then here's the other one. So we made this card. And this, one's a, this one has the purple in it, so it's a little darker. And then this one also turned out a little darker. I used a little bit more Bermuda Bay than I did. I used more Granny Apple Green on this one. So there we go. That is Heat Emboss Resist. Please make sure that you're clicking right up here so you can go to my blog and join in on the blog hop because everybody is going to be featuring the Heat Emboss Resist in a variety of different ways. 
And this is a global blog hop, meaning that I'm in the US, somebody else is in Australia, somebody else is in the UK, somebody else is in the Netherlands. These are all demonstrators from all over the world that will be sharing heat and boss resist techniques. Don't forget to click down here to subscribe to my YouTube channel. You don't want to miss anything I have coming out. And again, if you need to order any of these supplies, you'll find a complete shopping list on my blog with links. All you have to do is click on it. It'll take you right to my store. You're going to find my blog right here. Please use this host code if it's available. If it says it's not available, don't worry about it. A current host code will be in the right-hand column of my blog. Choose that one or leave it blank. I can fill it in for you. That gets you some special perks with me. Don't use that host code if your order is over $150. You will get your own benefits from Stampin' Up! And I'll still include you in the special perks from me. All right, you guys, I've got a lot of work to do today. I was so happy to be able to take a little time to stamp with you. Once again, thank you for spending a little bit of your day with me. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.